Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders Podcast and the Student Body Right Podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Trojan fans, Trojan fans, Trojan fans. Welcome to the Student Body Right USC podcast with myself, Dwayne Douglas, and our special guest, Phil Robinson, LA Football Network, um, Unfiltered Truth. Uh, it's, 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 what else? What else are you on? Because you, you're on so many different outlets. I don't know how you how you stay Raider sane. said Raider Ramble, Raider Sports Ramble. Map Radio, Post Game Central. If it's football related, chances are I'm probably working for it. Yeah. So there you go. So there you go. All those different um, things that my, my man Phil Robinson is here. Um, and going to help us out um, decipher this whole thing that's going on in college football. Um, this channel is to put on waivers media group. So that's put on Raiders podcast and also the USC football podcast. And also my San Francisco Giants who are playing the worst baseball possible. Uh, leading lead the league in errors right now, playing playing terrible, but eh, it's all good. It's all good. There's nothing you can do. Long season. We'll see what happens. Um, RTPW. Just lost Desco Fanny too. And it's not going to be. Um, RTPOW podcast is my Twitter handle. So definitely check us out and just check, check me out there. And also um, leave, a, leave a review um, on iTunes, all that good stuff. Um, and we'll definitely um, get back to you. Got some questions and stuff like that going on. But I want to start this saying, I want to start this podcast by saying, you know, there is a, there's a rap lyric that always stood with me my whole life. Brothers hate us because brothers ain't us. And it kind of, ref- it kind of goes to USC. It goes to USC in this whole um, situation here with um, them leaving. I thought I thought it was a mistake. I didn't think it was real, but it's definitely 100% real that they're going to be leaving the Pac-12 to go to the Big Ten. And all the other teams are scrambling right now. So, you know, all the little signs everybody used to have, University of Spoiled Children, all stuff like that, everything like that, where everything that's going on is kind of, it's, it's, it is what it is. But, like, at the end of the day, the conference desperately needed USC – and USC had an, has an opportunity here to make big bucks in this next TV contract. And they got, they got there's no way when it's talking, we're talking about $70 million, $80 million for, for that SC logo. There's no way you can't take advantage of that and, and go get it, Phil. No, there's really not. And so real, before we even start to get into this, there was a couple questions that I had and, I, and I'll ask you and we'll see where we get with this. Yeah. Say so what exactly how exactly is SC locked in now I saw that the Pac-12 was re look it was renegotiating their TV deal and it would be catastrophic it would be catastrophic for that for the network for the conference as a whole to lose SC it would be catastrophic for their TV deal because quite frankly there would be almost no one worth watching mm-hmm. and I, I just wanted to know what was how was SC locked in in the event that somehow the Pac-12 was able to pull a rabbit out of its hat and put together a deal befitting of the number one college football market in the war, in the in the nation in the largest media market that's available to them. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't I don't see how I don't see how USC to me to me you to me. This is, I don't know how Pac-12 could, could come up with any kind of package like that. They just don't have the teams for it. I, I was going to say, I don't know where the money would come from because I was going to say at this point, the Pac-12 needs to offer US, SC whatever they want. I mean, they're obviously negotiating from power, but even if you gave them the USC network, like like in New York, they have the Yes Network for the Yankees. Right. I, I, I don't know how that would still, I don't know how that would still work. I, I don't, I don't yeah. see it. I don't see I, it. I right? don't think that it would work either. Not, it, it's not out here like that. So that, that was really the only thing that I could think about, but then move. So there's only one way, but to move forward and say goodbye mm-hmm. to the PAC 12. It's been great. Give them the, give them the fight on. It's been, it's been great. <laughs> as far as that goes, it's been great. There's no other way to really, um, I mean, the PAC 12 network. I mean, like, I think the things that, I think the thing that, you have to look at too, is that you can't take things for granted. Like having that name recognition, having SC, having all, you, this, is a, this, this is a moving target here in college football. College football, actually the last seven years, the ratings have kind of declined. 
And what they want to do here is pretty clear. They want to make sure that they are being able to compete with their counterparts on Sunday. I mean, that's basically it. I mean, I love you. If you look at the Pac-12, a lot of these team, a lot of these teams have um, they're competing with pro football squads on on Sundays. I mean, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday's college football, and then boom, they, they have they have a pro market. You know, I mean, Boulder and Boulder, Colorado, with um the with the Broncos, with competing with the Broncos with the Buffs. Like there's there's a lot of different kind of variables there. Um, anything in Stanford and Cal, the Niners are right there. Like, they're a powerful brand right right there. So um, this is an opportunity for you know SC to really get kind of get things kind of get things continue to rolling in the right direction. And I don't see I don't see how you could not take advantage of this opportunity. They have a big one here um, doing that. Now I don't know if you saw this report here from um, Dennis Dubs uh, from CBS Sports that the Big 12 is in deep in deep discussions with to add six other Pac-12 teams. I don't know which teams they are or they're they're going to add, but I do think it would make sense for Arizona, the two Arizonas, Utah, Colorado. Um, bah, 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 who else was Oregon? You say Oregon? There? No, was not Oregon. So it wasn't at... Oregon, or so I think it it's Utah. I know it's Utah, Colorado, uh, both Arizonas, um, and there was Utah. somebody else that I'm forgetting. So we got Arizona's, we got Utah, we got. Yeah, I think it might have been San Diego State as well. That'd be big for San Diego State to get in there. Uh, that'd be a good Pac-12. That'd be a good Big Twelve school. Uh, that, that'd be a good spot. So if six other, are gonna. Add, I mean, are they, so nobody, hmm, no Cal, no, 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 Stan, no Stanford, Stanford. Nope. Yeah, interesting to see who who they who they take, but it would just be kind of give them a kind of a Western division of that, of the big 10, which I think would make a little bit more sense. Yes. You're going to sprinkle. Right. If, if you got USC in it, you're going to be playing. You're going to play Ohio state. You're going to play Michigan. You're going to play some of these. They didn't do they didn't make this move. I mean, they, I can see a home and home series over the years with, at, with James Franklin and, um, and, and Penn state. I mean, it, it just would make sense. You're not gonna, you know, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think they made this move to have Michigan, or um, not to have Michigan and have, not to have Iowa, not to have Ohio State, Penn State, and just, you know, they ain't playing Maryland and Minnesota and <laughs> to make this schedule, right? They, they didn't do that, so. Uh, schedule just got a lot colder, that's for sure. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm, I, you know, I'm gonna save it to last too, but like, what is like, I thought that with this landscape coming up here, doesn't it make sense for like Notre Dame to start? Like, I know NBC's paying that money, and I'm not gonna sit there and say like it's nice to have your own network where all your games are, everything like that. But like, what are they doing with independent? Like being independent. I mean, it's gonna be hard to be independent in this in this in this market now, in this marketplace. Now, I understand that a team like um, a team like Notre Dame. Has that contract? They have a team. They have a team in Notre Dame right now. It has one of the best. This is supposed to be with their best team in like 20 years. That's all I hear from everybody. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a phenomenal U. Um, Notre Dame team. It just makes sense to just finally crack that, crack the bug, crack the crack the glass here and, and enjoy the conference. So here's where we are with Notre Dame. The reason why in, the reason why Notre Dame was the reason why Notre Dame has remained independent was so mm -hmm. that they could cherry pick their schedule yep. and make sure that they were in the runnings throughout throughout the the duration of the season. With these with this with the formations of these super conferences, we'll we'll just call them those for right now. They as an individual, they they can't cherry pick the schedule anymore because they won't be ranked. They'll be like these super conferences are playing. Everybody's playing everybody, and you're mm -hmm. over here playing damn near D two schools and everybody and the Big East. Vanderbilt. Like no nobody recognizes your schedule as, as legit, and so therefore you're no longer in the CFB contention. Yeah, and at I mean. that from that point they would have to join the Big Ten. Why they haven't been a part of the Big Ten is beyond me. Uh, I would figure that the Big Ten with Notre Dame 
with is a far better conference than the Big Ten without it. Yeah. And then uh, it was pointed out to me by a friend of ours that if, if they were if once UCLA and USC joins, if Oregon was to join, then you would have then you would have Notre Dame come in and Notre then you would have natural rivalries that the Pac-12 has always had with the Big Ten. And then you'd be able to add Stanford, not Stanford, but Notre Dame to the mix. I, just, I would think that um, I, I I would think Notre Dame. I just think Notre Dame makes sense, and I'm not sure what the kind of what, what, what the concept is um, behind keeping him out. But I know that that money. I know I know NBC is playing a pretty penny. They don't want to lose that contract, but it just makes sense. I mean, it, it may probably be easier for NBC to be like, hey, we got one, we got one squad here to take care of, and that's it. Notre Dame. No, I, we, I can't I can't believe that NBC is currently paying them a hundred million dollars plus. I just can't. It's no way. It. It's no way. I mean, let me see if I can find that. Find, find, find how much NBC is paying in Notre Dame for that package. But it's, but it's. I mean, anyway, it just it just makes sense. It just, it just makes sense to to join this conference, NBC. Deal the deal surprised college football world and left many. Um, many other S C F A members unhappy with Notre Dame. Notre Dame got half of seven point six million dollars by NBC paid. So I mean, if it's if it's here and it's it's seven point six, and I mean that's not that's nothing. I mean, seven point six is nothing to join that conference. I mean, just, just recruiting. Like, I mean, we hate Notre Dame here on this channel, but. Let's just be real. Like they, if they are able to get into a conference like this, recruiting is going to be <laughs> recruiting is already good in Notre Dame. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be damn good if they if they're able to get in South. The South is able to get into this conference. I mean, it's so, it all so sense in the world. So let's talk about recruiting because as, as I've as I've now had time a weekend to sleep on this and begin to gi- digest this and look at all of the possibilities and factors at play here. So currently SC is is outspending everybody in the NI in terms of NIL, or at least their players are receiving more money than anybody else in terms of NIL. Mm-hmm. They're the second largest media market in the country, predominantly the lar- should be the largest in college football because they play in LA. And so having access to the big 10 and all of the all of the schools and being televised across the big 10 network is only going to increase their appeal as well and while i thought that it would be it would be a hindrance it's been pointed out to me and that it could potentially be even that much greater for them Mm -hmm. not only could it be greater for them in terms of exposure but they now have $100 $100 million at their disposal that they did not previously have. Mm-hmm. Or what did you say? 70? An extra 70? I mean, extra, I mean, who, I mean, like, you, you're you running that program and it's like, and here's the thing with the, with the, with the Pac-12 situation was, hey, USC, we're going to be like, the, they're trying to treat these teams like the NFL, and the NFL's deal was, hey, let's just split our money up evenly going forward, and then it'll be best for the league. In college football, it's like if I if I'm a I'm SC and I'm bringing I'm bringing up I'm bringing all this stuff into the marketplace. Why am I giving the same amount of money to Oregon State? Why am I why am I bringing why am I, why am I giving that same money to you know Cal? Like I mean it's just I mean I don't know I, I mean I, I cannot it doesn't like people don't want to hear that part of it because of tradition and all that stuff like that. But like. Uh, money talks, man. Like you know what I'm saying. So like I mean, like I, you can't you can't sit there and say that it's not a great opportunity. You gotta go out and take it. And then I'm gonna share. Why am I sharing it? I'm the biggest entity in this whole thing. And and a lot of the problem with the Pac-12 came as this is that it, it was a conference that encompassed more than just football. And as the football programs have grown in, in importance, they never adjusted. What you see with what you see with a lot of these football teams in the Pac-10. Pac-12, excuse me, is that they're just happy to be there. They're content. They're content to be a middling team, and success is determined at making a bowl game. You can make a bowl game with a with a sub 500 record, but yeah. as long as you hit a bowl, 
that's considered a successful season. And that's just not going to cut it in today's television market when it comes to football. If you're not challenging for a conference title, if you're not ranked, if you're not in the playoff picture, nobody wants to watch you. Yeah. It's period. And the discussion. And these teams have skated by for too long with the met with the with the sub subpar standards of success. Yeah. And the thing about it too is like if you're gonna if you are going to we're not we're not we're not in college anymore. So like and we're not young men who don't have you know you know women or wives, girlfriends, whatever. If you're gonna if you're going to say, hey, I want to stay home and watch the game. There has to be a big game to watch. Right. And a, and a lot of times, it's not a big game to watch. Nope. That's why they're trying to create these conferences where, oh, I'm not, I haven't seen, I haven't seen um, USC play Iowa in forever. Or Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Or Michigan, or Ohio State, or, you know, <laughs> or Nebraska, you know I mean? Stuff Penn like that. State, yeah. Penn State. Like, I mean, you haven't seen those games. I mean, on the NFL schedule, even on a poor NFL schedule, you can find two or three games. I mean, you're probably not watching the Texans play the Jags, but you're watching everything else. And that's what college football is missing. And that's why they have to get that. They have to get that along with the tradition, go to be able to sit back and say, we have to move forward and get things going in the right direction. Because I mean, you can't, you're competing with eyeballs. You're competing with eyeballs. Like you, it is a competition consist, consistently for, for people, people to watch, um, watch these sports. And if you don't have the, if you don't have the big, big games, you can forget about it. Absolutely. And, and like you said, that's really what it comes down to it, it, you have to have a superior product or, or you're just not going to get the, you're not going to get the views. You're not going to get the ratings. You're not going to keep the attention. You're not going to more, most importantly, you're not going to get the money. Mm-hmm. Now, why is the, why is the SEC the dominant conference? Because they do all the winning because they invest into, for lack of, for those who are not familiar with the, with the process, they invest into the product. So the investment takes many different forms, but they invest into the product and we'll leave it at that. Not, not, not in court to save it. They don't do it, but I guess, the, but I guess we all know better. Um, biggest pro, biggest, let's do pros and cons here. Biggest, I mean, we, biggest pros and cons of going, making this, making this deal. Um, you know, pros are obviously, obviously that dough. I mean, that that dough and, and that dough and, and how that dough works with not only themselves and other teams, and other teams as far as um, other sport, other athletics, little program. A lot of a lot of um, Olympians have gone to USC, so that's gonna that's gonna feed into that program. A, a, a better training facilities, all those things like that. Uh, what what other pros do we have as far as? this deal with um, USC and UCLA going to the, going to the big 10. So you see UCLA at this point is stealing money. Well, let's call it what it is. They are stealing money. And in fact, if you want my honest opinion, well, that you said pro, so let's stay, let's stick with pros <laughs> right now. They are right now. They are, have seemed to have solved their month, their financial issues. Yes. And would probably by the end of this deal that they have signed up for until the next TV deal or conference restructure, they will be paid <laughs> handsomely for everything. Uh, I don't see Chip Kelly being staying in this conference long, but he's here now and they're getting paid for them to be here. In terms of USC, now this is where it gets interesting. Now we can talk a lot about money. But this has an opportunity to do more for USC in terms of program mystique and program history than it does for money. So USC is already leading the, leading the nation in national championships in football and outside of football and, and a powerhouse on the West Coast where they play a different brand of football. USC has the opportunity, Lincoln Riley has the opportunity to establish himself in a powerhouse conference and give put themselves in a position to get the rankings they need to challenge for a national championship and and let's be let's be honest with the state that the pac-12 is in now even if they won the pac-12 they are not they weren't going to be front runners for the title for the championship game for the playoffs 
They'd not like it they, used to be. They'd, they'd be lucky if they got to the front. They'd, lucky they they'd got, be lucky if they got to the top it. 10. Yeah, lucky. And that and that's the that's the whole of it. Now the cons are a different story. Now I'll let you. This is your program, so I'll let you disperse that. The cons, I don't, I don't see as many as everybody else does. I think the college football season ends a little earlier than um, people think. I mean, there aren't games in the, in late December. The, the season's going to end around um, in the middle of November. So it's not. So, I mean, some of these areas are not, you know, ice bowl games like everybody thinks that, that thinks they're going to be. Um, I think I think that's part of it. Um, for, that, that's one kind of I know people don't like is, is, is the weather, but we don't. But I said, but I think we don't know how many weather games they're going to have because if they add six other Pac-12 Pac-12 teams, then you might only be going. You might be doing home and home with Michigan or home and home with Penn State, home and home with Ohio State. Like I mean, you you don't know how many games you're going to play because it sounds like it's not just going to be UC, USC, and UCLA. So when that kind of sifts through the um, the dirt and everything like that, we'll have to see who um, see who prevails. Um, I don't I don't I don't I don't know what cons there really is because they just have to. It's, it's kind of a move when you have the Pac-12 deal in front of you and the Big and the Big Ten deal in front of you. It's hard to say, oh, I want to take that Pac-12. Uh, money because and take that deal because it just doesn't make any financial sense to do so so that i i hear you that and i'll raise you this and this is where this is a con sc took sc took themselves out of a situation where they were all but guaranteed a shot at the conference title every single year wow they, they will not be they will not be guaranteed a shot at the Big Ten championship every single year, not by a long shot. They're going to have to earn this division. They're going to have to win this conference. Excuse me. Got to remember that conference and the Big Ten. The Big Ten plays a different style of football than what they're used to. And currently they're not a cut. They're not equipped to handle it. Now. I don't I don't see that they can they can recruit their recruiting should get better. And so it will be interesting, but it's a completely different style. And that defense is and their defense is not good enough to play in this conference. Not even close. Now, when it comes to UCLA, what are my cons? My cons are this and you can call me a hater as follows. UCLA is only going to be in the Big Ten as long as this initial deal will allow for if the basketball program does not carry them, they will be they will be removed because UCLA has no business in this conference playing football. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm not. I get the Bruins this like if they're gonna. I, I see what you see your point, but if you got Rutgers, if you got Maryland, if you got some of these, you got Minnesota. You know, you got teams like that. Then I get, they might not beat Maryland. I think out, out of that, they, might, they, they it might beat Ruck. They'll be they should beat Rutgers. They'll have they'll play Nebraska. And past that, <laughs> I don't see them. I don't I don't see them picking up another game. Yeah, I mean they, they really are that that whole. I mean he's they're gonna. I'm not sure what Kelly's um contract is, but they are in a situation where like. If they, he'll be getting fired soon. He'll be getting fired soon. I mean, I I just don't see that as that as being a um as being a really great a great situation for them with this move. They need to go get a big time head coach and even a second tier big time head coach. You know, I mean, a big time head coach don't usually come to running to UCLA. It's not like it's not a spot where you want to do that. You might have to you might have to catch a young Lincoln Riley, like you know, somebody who's up and coming, like you know, somebody who's on a Jimbo Fisher staff or somebody who's on. A, um, a Nick Saban staff who's highly regarded who you want to overpay and big and get big money to. So I, I do hear you on the cons of the, the front and where's the beef as far as you know stopping physical football in that in that conference. But I will say that at the very at the very least, the, the USC doesn't have to USC doesn't have to. I love Carlos. Um, USC does not have to. They have a couple of cycles where they can re up. Um, you know, whether it's the transfer portal, whether it's the um, where it's recruiting, they have a couple of years where it's not, they're not going to play at the big house tomorrow. So at least, at, at least, at least it does give them an opportunity to kind of get that, to kind of get the ball rolling with recruiting and the ball rolling as far as getting bigger up front. 
uh, and you're right about that. They have time. They definitely have time. And I, I may be sounding the alarm a bit prematurely, but I also understand you're talking about a, divi- a conference where you are seeing the premier pass rushers at week in and week out every single year. I'm talking about you're looking at the guys where it simply does not get any better than these. Your Nick Bosa's, your Chase Young's, you know, those types of players. Quitty Pay playing that conference. Your Quitty too, Pay, and, your yeah. Quitty Pay, Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. Well, wasn't uh, uh, TJ Watt out here too? So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, uh, that, 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 that's a change. Uh, no question about it. No question about it. No question about it. But I do, I do like the fact that he does like to run, you know, pulling guards and, and, and people like that and, and, and run the ball, and run the ball physically. So, that's not, so that's something he does, that, 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 um, Ricky Riley does as well. So, but like, you know, you have a show called um, After Dark, right? Like, a lot of times it was the Pac 12 was, was Pac 12 After Dark. Like, even if something great happened, I'll text a friend and they'll be like, oh, I, I was sleep. Never saw. I was it. sleep. I never sleep. Never saw yep. it. Like you know, and I, I was. I remember back. I remember back when this um started that people were talking about maybe the Pac-12 playing games at nine a.m. or nine thirty a.m. just to be on TV. Um, never so, playing a game. Yeah, never playing a game later than four thirty. Yes, exactly. So like those, those are the kind of things that got that that, that 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 they have to think about before. So and now um and I. And now, and now, and now, USC. I mean, I, I guarantee you the time will change. The times of these games will change, especially when they play in this conference. Like, even if they're playing, the, the, the they playing, um, you know, Iowa late at night. They're, they're playing it so everybody, the whole nation can see. Um, as far as as far as that goes. Um, trying to think here, what else we have on the, the the agenda as far as as far as that goes? You mentioned you mentioned recruiting. Um, I do feel like um. Do you feel like that? I mean, because like here, here's the thing: like you, you like if they just stayed in their own backyard, they could get get a lot of get a lot get enough guys to compete for a national championship in a couple of years. They probably do. They probably would need to go a little bit because like usually like the defensive tackles and the defensive and the and the big. Offensive linemen you need are usually, you know, Midwest guys. They're not, they might not be uh, West, but um, I think this exposure helps them a lot. Like, I, I really, I really think, I think it does help them a lot. And having these games played earlier um, so people can actually see USC play and see, see some West Coast football play being played. I mean, I'm not sure why. I mean, we don't, I mean, we got a lot going on. I mean, the thing about West Coast life is like we do have a lot going on, but if you tell me it's a big game on, you you definitely gonna get you definitely gonna you definitely gonna go to the liquor store and, and hang on sit, sit sit with your boys and watch and watch a big game. I think I think that's I think that's a plus here for recruiting that they will have an opportunity to to kind of like if the kid who's on the fence, hey maybe you can go into um, Western Pennsylvania, maybe you can go into um, Ohio and, and and or Michigan and steal some kids. Uh, it, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna help that. Th- they'll be able to be televised that that's ultimately what it comes down to because you look at it see we think when when we think about a a game we have the benefit of being on the west coast so an early game to us is the nine o'clock game the 10 o'clock game said that and then that way we still have the whole rest of our day Uh, the late game it starts at noon for us for where everybody else is oh this is 3 30 4 o'clock that's noon one o'clock in the afternoon and so by the time the night games come around and we've already covered this, everybody else isn't paying attention, which is where the schedule change is going to benefit USC tremendously. You're going to get to see everything that you and I already see, everything that the West Coast fans know, mm-hmm. all of the excitement, all of the buzz. Uh, they'll basically the whole Midwest will be able to put a name to the face. Yes. Like, OK, we've heard about SC football. This is what we're this is what we've heard about. Yeah, and then it's not just them watching us play Notre Dame. Like it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be they actually actually get to see uh, SC play. Um, the Yahoo Sports um, college football uh, st- uh, statement from the Pac-12. The Pac-12 board of directors met this morning and authorized the conference to immediately begin negotiating its next media uh, media rights agreement. Uh, I'm not sure what. It's a day late and a dollar short, homeboy. <laughs> That's exactly. That's the, that is actually 100% the first tweet right after that is that one. So it's pretty funny. So reportedly, um, let's go, let's go here to um, um, Kevin Feenley, 
Um, he is per reporting that the other PAC, the other PAC 12 teams are, are in discussions to go to the big, the big, well, the big 12, it looks like. So it's big 12, big 12 is currently, it says big 12. So it says Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, um, Colorado, Oregon, and, and Washington. So is that the, let me just see if I got that one wrong or not. I think I said big 12, I think I said big, are they trying to go to the big 12 or are they trying, oh, big 12 is in great. So the big 12 is in, sorry, my fault. I said big 10, big 12 is in um, discussions. Big 12 is in the discussions to add, um, not the big 10, so the big 12 is. The big 12 is, so it's the big 12 who's trying to, who's trying to get, um, to get, to get more teams. It's the Big 12, not the Big 12, not the Big 10. But I still, I, th I think the only thing that I've heard from the Big 10 is they'll add one more. But it, but the only thing, they, only thing they're going to add is they have to pick the winner. And the guy and the team they want are the Golden Domers. I mean, I, I mean that's what it, that's all it is. It's the Golden Domers. They they want that team. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as that as, as far as um as far as that goes, does this kill college football's tradition at all? I mean, for, for those who are traditionalists who want to yeah. hang on to traditional, I mean, it, it, it kind of. It kind of destroys it a little it, bit. It's it's been it's been dying for a while it, with the with the sheer amount of money that's been poured into it. Because what what you tend to see is that money kills the pageantry mm -hmm. because because now it becomes a, a question of who's got more capital, who's got more revenue, who's investing more into the product than other pe other people, other teams. Uh, but the reality of the situation is this: is that these teams are you're now paying players so they're not playing for school pride anymore they're playing for money yeah you've got you've you've obliterated your your division your conferences so it's no longer regional yes it, it's strictly it's strictly by invite only 20 teams so you went from saying that we're a nation a uh, uh, college football nation of a hundred plus teams or however many teams 64 college teams right but now you're at a point now where only 20 teams have a shot only 30 yeah 20 maybe 30 teams out of two conferences have a shot to win a national championship everybody else playing for a sec for division two at this point they might as well be d2 because and even if they yeah. even if they were to remain division one, they're still never going to get a sniff. Yeah, it's you know it's it was, I don't know it is what it is as far as that goes. I, I I just I just I don't know. I, I I was watching, I was reading some stuff about USC and fans were like, why not why why don't they just go independent? Da, da, da. And I, I threw that in the rundown and I sent to you and I'm just like, just kind of have you, I wanted to have, have your response on it and I'll go I, I, I'll, I'll go first real quick it's just like I don't see how that makes sense when everybody's in a big time conference they don't have to I mean you gotta go if you go in a conference you have to play that you have to play some teams like why am I if you're a stat USC say it's 2003 you, know, you gotta I mean, be earlier than that you gotta be I mean I mean, be I mean I mean 2023 I'm you gotta like, you gotta be looking at the John Robinson Trojans to go yeah. back to where being an independent would make sense it makes you exactly have to, yeah, it you makes, have exactly. to be the hottest draw around the block period like I'm talking in the national winning national titles Every consistently year. yeah I, I I don't see how that I know people were excited about that part of it I'm like listen I, that doesn't make any sense because like no. just every it just makes because like and you're, you're, you're basically do I mean like Notre Dame is going to have a hard time if Notre Dame is as good as everybody says they're going to be and like say they and say this new coach is it just it just doing a great job of recruiting and, and getting getting Notre Dame into to a high level like I'm gonna be like okay I already play in the SEC why am I why am I adding y'all <laughs> like, like why am I adding y'all like well, why am I adding, I already have a quality of schedule that's gonna that, that destroys everybody why am I gonna add y'all it, it, it makes no sense and no and and the thing about Notre Dame is they're never as good as they say they are they are always got they always got the team until they play somebody who's until legit somebody. for real yeah, exactly. and and which is why they which is why they tried to stay out of those conferences I mean they're not fooling anybody they only they only play one to one to two real games a year and a, as such 
SC was one of those real games. Like, okay, as long as well, we beat we beat SC, the monsters of the Pac-12. So we we're we're good. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't I don't see how that is. I don't, I don't see how that is going to be. Um, I don't, I don't see how that's going to be a big thing. Um, it, it's I mean for what for our scheduling goes when do, when 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 are these games going to be played? Are we talking about the typical like middle of the day? Four o'clock, our time. One o'clock. The East Coast. I know living on the East Coast for a, while, a lot of years, especially for college football, they love that one o'clock to twelve o'clock on time slot. They love that. So yeah, will they, I was gonna will say, they adjust. Will they adjust? Yeah, that? they re- honestly, they really shouldn't have to. I think the only game that you would adjust would probably be the SC home games, and you probably have to start, and you would just start them at noon. You'd start it on a regular Big Ten yeah. schedule, and it would be just like. The only the only difference would be people would be getting up at the butt crack of dawn for pre, for pre gaming. Yes, but but out here, but out here on the West Coast, they'd be starting. It'd be a, a normal start at the games at twelve. Yeah, no about it. yeah, because I, I I do think that's one thing to to kind of to kind of look at too as well how they how they're gonna figure that part out. And it's, actually, it's not- I, real talk, actually, it's probably better for the students if you really want to keep it a buck. Because after the after they get rid of that game, they still got the whole evening to go out and plan their uh, exactly. night of debauchery. I guess they can, they can go do their they can do their thing out there yeah. out there and, and, and be kids. I mean, yes, as as yes, they would still be able to do it if they started at seven. Because you know, kid college kids go all night long, but now they got more time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, I think I think for SC had a had a decent year um, last couple of years in, in basketball as well. So we will talk about that part of it. I mean, but UCLA is more is more of the traditional basketball power. They they get a chance to come in and come in this conference, and um and and I'm sure they're probably going to be trying to do some things as far as is um as far as far as that goes. Any um any last um, thoughts about this whole this whole move here from um from SC to the to the Big Twelve? I know we got to wait a couple of years for it, um, but I mean in the meantime, I mean this is you know. The present day team is going through a, a tremendous makeover um, um, due to recruiting and and um, nil and transfer portal. Still have still have some holes. Um, not no no team is perfect um, as far as far as that goes. Um, what are your thoughts about um, um, things things and the latest news from from USC on the field? Uh, like I said, I've had I've now had a weekend to think about it said it's not fresh i i've attacked it for and the more that i look at it the more and more it, it's a better thing for sc it's a no-brainer they they end up the big winners out of this even though even though they're taking the risk on not having the pac-12 handed to them every say or only having to play three games a year i i would the one thing as much as i hate the idea of realignment and what it does for everything the one thing that i do truly enjoy is that you're getting rid of the fluff, the, the fluff schedules. Yes. Everybody now, everybody now has to play somebody every game of the season. It's you don't have these games where we're going to stat pad and these guys are getting blown out by 70 because we paid them a million dollars just to show up. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, I just I don't see I, I think it's a, I think it's a great opportunity for everybody involved. I think that I love the way. This whole off season has been tremendous. That you go get Gurley and Riley, you um you make this kind of like this really quiet stealth move. I mean, I'm sure they you at UCLA, USC and UCLA probably worked together more this last month, and they probably did it forever. Um, and just say don't say nothing, UCLA. If you want to give me, you want to come rivals, don't say nothing. Then boom, my phone never blew up more so than um than that taking place as far as um as far as the um as far as the as far as you know them making this move. To this conference any um anything you're working on now any stories you're working on now for Raider Ramble or LA football uh no actually I know that on uh Thursday we're I'm supposed to be linking up with my guy Alfred Rowe and we're gonna we're gonna record salute to Troy which is our our podcast for LA football network and we're gonna get into some more depth about this he's got some additional information and then uh I'll probably bring in up all the points that I had and some different ones that'll be even better probably look into what exactly it is that the pac 12 is going to try to do to salvage their situation which is pretty much dead on arrival because 
it that that's what it is yes you still have oregon yes you still have washington but they're going to have to they're going to have to pay them an awful lot of money and even past that now what do you, who do who do they play oregon only has utah that's it that's their only competition that's it, that's it man. i mean it's kind of crazy like you you take that oregon job and you think that you got you, know, you got one of the better jobs in the country and now you know you don't have nobody to play you have nobody to play and you have no it's like they're in conference usa yeah i mean think about it you're you move to a great neighborhood and you see all these kids and then when school and then and then the next thing you know like all the all the kids move away you hit your home by yourself and that's it and yeah you get somebody to play with you know and you can't get better playing yourself no you can't better you can't get better playing yourself all right so anybody right uh usc podcast um phil always great to have you on um ready to ramble LA football, uh, unfiltered truth. Um, it, it's just a myriad. I mean, they got, they got, it, it, I'm, I, I truly believe it's two Phil Robinsons because there's no way one person can do all this stuff. Um, but <laughs> I almost but, forgot. I got another channel. We're doing, we're doing wrestling and combat sports now called Truly Filthy Combat. Okay, there you go. I mean, well, that is, that it, it is. Um, I, I am. I gotta give. I, I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm not big in the MMA. I don't really watch a lot of it, but I will, for, as a business model, I give them a lot of credit because like you got like NFL, former NFL players fighting each other in the ring for, for on the boxing side. But the stars who come out to watch, you know, Dana White's product, it, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Like he really, he, he is really kind of raking the dough and kind of ruling, ruling that, uh, ruling that, ruling that whole situation over there. So I, I gotta give him credit too. So that's pretty crazy. Bare knuckle fight, fighting, bro. They, yeah. It's it'll never go away. Never go away. Been around for a long time. All right, Phil. Take care, brother. See you next time. All right.